Hello everyone. I am Mira, an AI, employee of MGI. Welcome to the Best Practice Series channel. I will bring you a series of operational demonstration videos for the DNB Seek G99 this time. This series is divided into three sections. They are DNB preparation, sequencing reagent cartridge preparation, and sequencing run setup. Now, let's move on to the first part, the DNB preparation demonstration. Currently, the DNB Seq G99 platform, based on the new generation of DNB Seq standard MPS 2.0 reagents, has introduced two types of sequencing reagent kits. The first type is the G99 High Throughput Sequencing Reagent Kit, which is compatible with MGI Structures Libraries, FCLSE 100 and PE50, PE150, and SE400 are included. The second type also includes three sequencing reagent kits that are compatible with both third-party structures libraries and mixed sequencing with MGI structures libraries. They are APTI FCLSE 100, PE150, and PE300. You can choose the appropriate sequencing reagent kit based on different application. In this video, I will demonstrate using the G99 FCL PE150 sequencing reagent kit, which is compatible with MGI libraries. First, let's have a look at the components of the sequencing reagent kit. The entire G99 sequencing reagent kit comes in a single box. Upon opening the sequencing reagent kit, you will find a sequencing reagent cartridge packaged in a vacuum sealed bag, a sequencing flow cell, some tubes of DNB preparation reagent, two tubes of PE sequencing reagent, and a puncher. Now, let's start preparing the relevant sequencing reagents. Firstly, there are two recommended thawing methods for the sequencing reagent cartridge. The first method is to take out the sequencing reagent cartridge one day in advance and place it in a 2 to 8 degree refrigerator to thaw. If the thawing time is insufficient, you can follow the instructions in the manual to perform a RT water bath for half an hour until completely thawed. The second method is to take out the sequencing reagent cartridge on the same day and thaw it in a RT water bath. Add water to make the reagent cartridge float completely. The time required for water bath thawing varies for different sequencing reagent cartridges. Please choose the appropriate thawing method based on your needs. While the sequencing reagent cartridge is thawing, you can calculate the input volume of the SS Circular DNA library based on the library information to be sequenced. For this demonstration, I'm using the G99 FCL PE150 sequencing reagent kit, which is compatible with libraries with insert sizes ranging from 300 to 500 base pairs. The required input amount for the SS Circular DNA library is 20 femtomol. Based on the above information, we know that the total fragment size of the SS Circular DNA library is 426 base pairs, and the concentration is 1.3 nanogram per microliter. By inputting the library information into the conversion formula between femtomol and nanogram, we can calculate that 2.16 microliter of the library is needed. After determining the input volume of the library, we can proceed with the preparation of DNB. First, take out the low TE buffer, make DNB buffer and stop DNB reaction buffer from the sequencing reagent kit. Thaw them at room temperature, vortex to mix well, briefly centrifuge, and place them on ice for later use. Next, take out the Make DNB Enzyme Mix 1 and place it on ice for about half an hour to thaw. Once thawed, Vortex to mix well for 5 seconds briefly centrifuge and place it on ice for later use. Once the reagents and library are ready, take a 0.2 milliliter PCR tube and label it accordingly. Following the instructions in the manual sequentially add the following to the PCR tube. 7.84 microliter of low TE buffer, 10 microliter of make DNB buffer, and 2.16 microliter of thoroughly mixed library. Then vortex the PCR tube to mix well. Centrifuge for 5 seconds and place it in the thermocycler. Set the reaction conditions as shown in the figure to perform the primer hybridization reaction. During the primer hybridization reaction, Take out the Make DNB Enzyme Mix 2 LC from the sequencing reagent kit. Briefly centrifuge it and place it on ice for later use. After the primer hybridization reaction is complete, take out the reaction mixture from the thermocycler. Briefly centrifuge it. 
sequentially add 20 microliter of make dnb enzyme mix 1 and 2 microliter of make dnb enzyme mix 2 lc vortex the mixture to mix well centrifuge briefly and immediately place it back in the thermocycler for rolling circle amplification set the reaction conditions as shown in the figure it is important to note that the make dnb enzyme mix 2 lc should not be discarded at this stage it needs to be placed back on ice for later use. After the rolling circle amplification reaction is complete, immediately remove the reaction tube from the thermocycler and promptly add 10 microliter of stop DNB reaction buffer. Then, using a wide bore pipette tip without a filter gently pipette the reaction mixture up and down 5 to 8 times to mix thoroughly. At this point, the tube contains the DNBs. Finally, place the tube in a 4 degree environment for storage for further use. Next, take 2 microliter of DNB for concentration measurement. The acceptable standard for DNB concentration is more than 8 nanogram per microliter. In this demonstration, the DNB concentration is 23.6 nanogram per microliter. If the DNB concentration does not meet the standard, it needs to be prepared again. If it exceeds 40 nanogram per microliter, dilute it with TE buffer to 20 nanogram per microliter before use. That concludes the first part of our demonstration video on DNB Seek G99 DNB preparation. Welcome to the DNB Seek G99 sequencing reagent cartridge preparation section. After completing the DNB preparation, we can now start preparing the sequencing reagent cartridge. First, take the sequencing flow cell out of the sequencing reagent kit and place it on the table. Let it incubation at room temperature for half an hour. Next, take the thawed sequencing reagent cartridge. Invert it five times to mix the cartridge thoroughly. Remove the outer packaging bag. Take out the reagent cartridge and check that it is intact. Use dust-free paper to wipe off any condensation on the cover and around the wells. Then, take a puncher from the reagent kit. Sequentially press down on the M1, M2, M3, and M4 wells of the reagent cartridge. This will ensure that the preloaded sequencing reagents and sequencing enzymes in the M1 to M4 wells drop into the corresponding wells containing the sequencing buffer. Next, hold the reagent cartridge with both hands on the A and B sides. Shake the cartridge vigorously 20 times in an up and down motion, and 20 times in a clockwise and counterclockwise direction. This step ensures that the sequencing reagents, sequencing enzymes, and sequencing buffer are thoroughly mixed. After completing the above steps, place the reagent cartridge flat on the table. Use a clean 1 ml pipette tip to puncture the MDA well. At this point, if you are performing G99 FCL SE100, SE400, or APTI FCL SE100 sequencing, the preparation of the sequencing reagent cartridge is complete. However, since this demonstration is for G99 FCL PE150, additional preparation of the MDA reagent is required. Take one tube each of MDA reagent and MDA enzyme mix from the sequencing reagent kit. Pipette 125 microliter of MDA enzyme mix into the MDA reagent tube. Cap it and invert it six times to mix thoroughly. Then, add all the prepared MDA mixture to the MDA well. During the addition, insert the pipette tip into the recessed side of the MDA well. And slowly add the MDA mixture. Ensure there is a gap between the pipette tip and the MDA well to balance the internal and external air pressure and avoid generating bubbles. With this, the preparation of the G99 FCL PE150 sequencing reagent cartridge is complete and it is ready to proceed to the next sequencing step. This concludes the second chapter of our demonstration video on preparing the DNB Seq G99 FCL PE150 sequencing reagent cartridge. Welcome to the DNB Seq G99 sequencing run setup section. After preparing the sequencing reagent cartridge, the next step is to log into the G99 sequencing UI software. Select either the A side or B side that is in an idle state to set the sequencing parameters. Click on the sequencing icon to enter the pre-sequencing self-check. The system will sequentially check the status of the disk space, sensors, optical system, and incubation system. The entire self-check process takes approximately one minute. Once the self-check is complete, click Next to enter the set interface. In the Workflow Type section, there are Sequence and Transmission, and Sequence Only. For this demonstration, I will select the Sequence Only. 
The BBS option is set to no by default. Enter the DNB name in the DNB ID field. From the recipe drop-down menu, select the PE150 plus 10 default, according to this demonstrate sequencing requirement. In the drop-down menu on the right side, select the corresponding barcode type based on the library information to be sequenced, choosing from 1 to 128 this time. In the advanced setting, select yes for both split barcode and auto wash. After confirming that all the information is correct, click next to proceed to the load cartridge interface. You will see the screen automatically rise revealing the reagent compartment. At this point, you can insert the prepared sequencing reagent cartridge into the A-side reagent compartment. Align the reagent cartridge with the A-direction label on the cartridge, and push it all the way to the end of the reagent compartment. As you insert the reagent cartridge, the system will automatically scan the RFID on the cartridge label to obtain all the information about the reagent cartridge, and automatically fill it in the UI software. Click on Prime, and the instrument will automatically start the preloading process for the sequencing reagent cartridge. This process takes approximately 2 minutes. In this period, you can simultaneously prepare the DNB loading mixture and load it onto the sequencing flow cell. Take the DNB load buffer 2 from the reagent kit, thaw it, vortex to mix, centrifuge briefly, and place it on ice for later use. Take a 0.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tube from the reagent kit. Prepare the DNB loading mixture according to the table provided. Sequentially add the following to the tube, 7 microliter of DNB load buffer 2, 1 microliter of make DNB enzyme mix 2, LC, and 21 microliter of DNBs. Using a wide-bore pipette tip gently mix the DNB loading mixture by pipetting up and down 5 to 8 times. After mixing, place it on ice for later use. Next, open the packaging of the sequencing flow cell that has incubated to room temperature. Take the flow cell out of the packaging box and inspect it for any physical damage. If there is any dust, use a canned air duster to blow off the dust from the back. It is important to note that when using canned air duster for dust removal, avoid the holes on both sides of the flow cell. Take out the loader and open the cover. Place the flow cell into the loader with the label side facing up, and close the cover securely. Flip the loader over and place it on a level surface. You will see that the large round hole is the inlet A and the small round hole is the outlet B. Next, use a 200 microliter pipette tip without a filter to draw 10 microliter of the DNB loading mixture. Insert the tip vertically into the inlet A of the flow cell, hold the pipette tip in place with one hand, and with the other hand, press the tip ejector button on the pipette to release the tip. Through the combined effects of gravity and capillary action, you will observe the liquid level in the tip dropping. Once the liquid level stops dropping, confirming that the DNB loading is complete, remove the tip from the inlet A. Flip the loader back to its upright position and place it on the table. Open the loader cover, take out the flow cell, and immediately transfer the flow cell to the sequencer. After the prime is complete, you will see the screen rise again, revealing the flow cell compartment position. Insert the flow cell, which has just been loaded with DNB, into the flow cell compartment. The system will automatically read and recognize the flow cell ID information via built-in RFID. Click next to enter the review interface. If there is any incorrect information, you can click the button in the upper right corner to make modifications. After confirming that all the information is correct, click sequence and then click yes to officially start the sequencing process. Through the sequencing software, you can monitor relevant information such as the sequencing stage, progress, and estimated completion time. During the sequencing process, you can also check parameters like the first base report, Q30, and so on at any time. Since the auto wash was selected during the sequencing setup, the instrument will perform an automatic wash after the sequencing is complete. Once all procedures are fully finished, the software will automatically display the sequencing report on the UI interface. At this point, you can click Finish. The screen will rise, and the waste liquid compartment door will open automatically. The waste liquid, used flow cell and used cartridge can be processed according to laboratory requirements and local regulations. After sequencing is complete, the sequencing software will automatically save the generated sequencing data and reports on the D drive. 
you can export the data directly using a USB drive or an external hard drive. Alternatively, if you have pre-configured the automatic upload IP, the sequencing data will be uploaded to the corresponding cluster. This concludes that all the content for best practice series of DNB Seq G99 FCL PE150. We hope that through this demonstration, you have mastered how to operate the DNB Seq G99 on your own. If you encounter any issues while using the G99 instrument, please contact our field application scientist. For more information, please visit our official website. Thank you.